So what we need to do here is we need to determine if a number is rational or irrational. So let's uh, take a look about what that means and then the easiest way to determine if the number is rational or irrational. Every single number that you've learned at this point um, up to uh, eighth grade uh, math has dealt with real numbers. And there's only two uh, broad categories. There's one category off here to the left that's called rational numbers. Okay, and we'll talk about what that means. But then there's a second category um, that we'll send off to the right side here that we just call that irrational. And, and it's basically this. It's either it's rational or it's not rational. Um, put that as a little note there just for a second to, to kind of do that. And um, these two groups together make up what we call the real numbers and and that's fine so if if we wanted to go through we could list all these different examples over here on the left side for rational numbers and we could list list uh, several different examples in the irrational numbers but um, let's just see if we can find the easiest way to describe it uh, any number that can be written sorry <laughs> as a fraction is what rational numbers are okay so there we go. Um, let's go ahead and just make that in red right there. And then irrational numbers, they're any number that can not be written as a fraction. Okay? So that's that's the main difference. So if we, we looked at a um, few set of numbers here, uh, let me just write them right here. One fourth. Well, since it's a fraction, that means it's rational. 0 0.2. Since I can actually make 0 0.2 into a fraction, it's rational. Um, what about 0 0.35 repeating? Well, we had a whole lesson about how to turn repeating decimals into a fraction, so that is rational. How about 3 and 1 fourth? Remember, we can turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. It'd be 13 over 4, so this is a rational number. There's a lot of uh, numbers that are rational and, and most of the numbers you deal with are rational. Um, going forward a little bit like this, how about square root of 4? Well, that equals 2 and we can make 2 into a fraction so technically the square root of 4 is a rational number. How about the cube root of 8? Well, the cube root of 8, if you recall, has an answer. Well, wrote that one wrong. The cube root of 8 has an answer of 2. And we can make that into a fraction. So basically, the cube root of 8 is indeed a rational number because we can take its answer and make it into a fraction. So we have fractions. We have decimals. We have repeating decimals. We have um, mixed numbers, and we have perfect square roots, and we have perfect cube roots. It's easier to draw a line here and go, well, what about the square root of 3? It's not a perfect square root. You could say, but it makes it into a decimal. Yes, it does, but the thing is with imperfect square roots, those decimals go on forever without a pattern. So uh, any imperfect square root... Any imperfect cube root, any of those, uh, are irrational. And then let us not forget pi. It's a decimal that goes on forever without a pattern, and so we can't turn it into a fraction. Now, for these terminating decimals, the decimals that just stop, we can turn that into a fraction. For the repeating decimals, we can turn that into a fraction. Um, the perfect square roots and perfect cube roots, we can turn those into a fraction. And so those are rational numbers. And if you really want to get down to it, there's only two different categories of numbers that are irrational that you know at this point uh, in eighth grade math would be imperfect square roots and pi. Anything else is going to be rational, but imperfect square roots and pi are irrational numbers. So let's take a look at, at uh, five numbers. I'm going to make up five of them here at this point. And well, let's make it six. All we're going to do 
is put an R or an I next to these numbers to classify them as rational or irrational. Five, is it rational or irrational? If I can make it to a fraction, it's rational. Okay. If it's a mixed number, I absolutely can make that into a fraction. It's rational. If it's a terminating decimal where that decimal doesn't go on forever, it's rational. If I see pi, 2 times pi, as soon as I see that pi in there, I go irrational. Now, once I get down to square roots, I kind of look at it a little bit closer. Is this a perfect square root or an imperfect square root? Imperfect. So that means it's going to be a decimal that goes on forever, and it's not going to repeat. So it's imperfect. It's irrational. This one, my answer is 10, and I can make that into a fraction. So this is rational. So that's what we do when we're uh, just, you know, divvying up these numbers into two different groups. It's either going to be rational or irrational. Rational numbers can be made into a fraction. Irrational can't be made into a fraction. Here's the two different types, imperfect square roots or cube roots and pi. Anytime you see pi involved, it's irrational.